Last year, we had a pretty good year. We stacked up a bunch of wins, but obviously we didn't come to the conclusion that we wanted, and that was a championship. And um, returning a lot of the pieces from last year, I feel like we have a, a good chance to accomplish our goals of winning some championships this year. Uh, I pretty much agree with what Dane said. You know, we were fortunate enough, you know, to not really have any injuries. I, I know some guys uh, later on in the year we did have some injuries, and some guys stepped up. So it was good to see those guys step up and see what they're capable of with the injuries and uh, having everybody back this year and healthy for right now. And um, hopefully, just looking forward, you know, we can be that team that stays healthy. That, that's a big part of your season. If you're fortunate enough to stay healthy, you you can make a run and go pretty far. And to capitalize on what they both just said, I think it's amazing looking back and then looking forward and seeing the leaders that we've all become and how we have a great program that we've built up and we just want to keep going with it. Just adding on, uh, 38 wins is definitely nothing to, you know, be sad about. You know, like there's a stat that I think we're one of 14 teams in the country that's won over 37 games in the past three years, which, you know, it's a great accomplishment, but I mean, when you're here, you know, everybody's trying to win championships and you play for championships. So when you don't reach that goal, it's obviously, you know, you to yourself, you underperform because you expect to win championships because that's why you play. But I mean, last year was definitely a great experience winning 38 games. Brooks, I'll start with you. Um, you mentioned last year not getting the result you guys wanted. A lot of that had to do with some tired arms. Uh, I talked to Coach Silver on the first day of practice. He says the pitching, the pitching staff might be the best unit on this team. How do you feel that's the case, and how do the arms feel with such depth at that, at that position? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely pretty cool. Last year we had to replace over 500 innings, and this year I think we have you know we have all those innings back. So if you look at it's kind of a common staple for teams that win championships is consistent pitching. You know, the coaches talk about it a lot that, you know, hitting is going to come and go, you know, because you're going to be facing different guys. But, you know, if you can consistently throw the ball over the plate, consistently get guys out, you're going to give yourself a chance to win a lot of games. Logan, the run to regionals, what do you remember about that team? And do you see that team at all in kind of this year's squad and potentially another deep run uh, into May, into May, maybe June? Um, yeah, I think a lot of key components from that team are still here. And, uh, you know, they're seniors and juniors now, so uh, they know what this is like, they know what it takes, and we've stepped up in the leadership roles. And uh, just being here and being able to experience that, we've passed that down to young guys. Um, you know, I, I think you know, the, the separation of the years, the roster is completely different, you know. Um, but I also see that this team understands that, and they know what it takes for us to win, and they know that we aren't that same team, but we also know that at the end of the day, we are capable of achieving what that team achieved with the new players that we have, the new guys that we have, the new leaders that we have. You know, um, it's about being the best team that we can be. It's not us trying to be that team. You know, we're not trying to be exactly like that team because we know then they were not that team. You know, so being the best team that we can be for this team and our pieces coming together. As long as our pieces come together, you know, we think we have a chance. Looking kind of feeding off my question about the pitching, uh, the offense was there for you guys a lot last year, and you had to rely on Sam Docker to kind of hold on to your leads at the end. What can that pitching staff help you with maybe the pressure of putting runs on the board, knowing you've got your best guys out there in the weekend, in the midweek, out there on the mound? Um, definitely. Uh, having guys like Brooks and, like, like I said, all, and Donko and Daly and Sean, you know, I can go on about the, that pitching staff uh, all day. I, I think it's a really good staff, you know, uh, playing against these guys and just seeing what they bring to the table. But uh, I'm excited to compete and have them on our side. Uh, but it is definitely easy to go into a game knowing that, you know, if we have a big inning, uh, the likelihood of us winning that game are high because uh, our pitchers, I don't think they give up a lot of runs. And, you know, it's easy to stay, like, sitting back. As long as we score runs and put up a couple, our, our pitchers are going to throw strikes and allow us to give us a chance to win the ball game. Dean, uh, sorry, go ahead, Nick. With all the depth you have in the pitching staff, what's the competition like? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's it's pretty competitive because, I mean, whenever you see in our inner squads, you'd see we probably have, you could count six, seven guys that you could legitimately see grabbing the ball on a, on a game and giving you five or six innings. So I'd say we definitely have a lot of, I mean, there's certainly a lot of depth for the pitching staff. I mean, there's a lot of guys who can do a lot of different roles. So it's pretty exciting right now. Can you handicap the conference? Whoever wants to take it, handicap the conference a little bit. Obviously, you guys picked second for the second consecutive year. St. Louis, everyone thinks they're the team to beat again. Where do you guys think you you fit and kind of maybe a little target on your back for the for the second straight year, which is 
deserved with uh, 38, 37 wins in back-to-back -back seasons. For whoever wants to jump in. Uh, I'll let these guys chime in. I guess I'll start. I'm a little <laughs> Been here longer. Um, I feel like we always have a target on our back. Like you said, with the way we constantly, you know, we we achieve wins over top name programs, and I think the rest of our conference sees that. And I'm not to slight the rest of the conference. I think they're all pretty competitive. I think they're great teams. But I think to be in their position to see that we constantly, every year, we achieve wins over top notch programs. It's like that's the team we want to be because that's the team that shows up on a national scale sometimes. And um, so we're used to having a target on our back. Um, we're, we're not, we're fine with that, you know, but at the end of the day, we're not, we're not that number one team. So we still have something to prove. Like they can chase us, but we're chasing somebody else, you know? So, and I'll let these guys chime in on the other teams and what they think about our conference. Yeah, going off of what Logan said, um, we're not that number one team right now in the conference. And that gives us motivation and reason to, you know, come out and really have a chip on our shoulder this year because we've never won our conference regular season and we still have some goals that we want to accomplish. But um, yeah, we always do have a target on our back, but you know, we, we're still shooting for that number one spot that we haven't attained. Okay. You're going to be the leadoff man for this batting order starting in left field. Uh, a lot of damage done last year, first half of the lineup. How do you feel you'll be able to contribute right out of the gate each game for you? Uh, I think uh, I honestly can't wait. I can't wait to get down in Tallahassee and lead it off and just start the year off that way. But uh, I think that what I can do is create pressure for these other guys in the lineup for maybe get some balls left up in the zone. or uh, they don't. If I get on base, they don't want to throw dirt balls. So a guy like Logan come up and get a good swing on the ball. And I just, that's my goal is to overall just create pressure on, on uh offense and see the result of that and that's what I'm looking forward to. You mentioned Tallahassee. You guys head out Thursday morning to play the number two team. It, according to which poll you look at, <laughs> Florida State. Um, you've been to Miami. You've played Florida State. You've played some of the best programs in the country. What can these opportunities provide this team playing in potential regional sites, playing against bigger competition for what you guys want to do this season? I personally think that this is a big opportunity for us to get this. It's going to be, it's opening, you know, opening week. It's going to be a lot of hype. So if we, when we make this run later in the season, it's, it's going to feel like we've already been there. And this is a perfect way to start it. And I just think that's a great opportunity for us as a program to do. Along, along those lines, if you had your druthers, if you could pick, you could play the number two team in the country, or you can kind of ease into the start of the season and give an idea of what, what you would choose. Uh, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't change. Uh, I'd want to play the top-notch programs because I think that's where you want to be. Uh, if this is where you want to get better, you have to play the best teams. If that's what you, you have to measure yourself against somebody, and you want to play the best teams and see where your competition's at. So I don't think there's no time to ease into the season. We we don't want it that way. You don't want it to be that easy because uh, it's easy to be complacent. It's easy to go against some team and sweep them and think, hey, like we're at the top of the mountain. You know, we go up against one of the best teams in the country. We try to schedule like this every year because at the end of the year, this is what we want to feel. You know, so starting off there, like he said, like you guys said, um, being in Miami, we play teams like that. So starting off with teams like this, we're preparing ourselves for where we want to end up, you know, so I guess being young and having you guys in the lineup, this is where we test to see, is this atmosphere really too big for you? But you get the experience now, so when it comes up again later, you already know what that feels like. Dan, I'll start with you. Oh, sorry. Uh, Dan, I'll start with you. Um, you guys have had a lot of time out on the field this year compared to years past with the weather. Uh, how much does that help get the season started with the amount of practice time you can get instead of just maybe sitting inside and trying to go in the batting cage and, and, and get the bat time? Yeah, the uh, weather's been great early on, and especially for our northern guys coming back here, we're kind of cooped up inside all of break. So it was great to get back up out here and on the field right away because Sometimes when you come back from break, you know, it takes a little bit longer to get the team back together and sharpen the, sharpen the knife a little bit, but it was, it was good to get back on the field early because you get back in that rhythm that you're in the fall when you're sharp and you're, you're together and working as a unit. You broke as a pitching staff. You have a guy like Sam at the back end. Kind of give you an idea of what that does top to bottom for, for a pitching staff to know that you've got the NCAA leader in closers finishing up games for you. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty comforting, you know. As a starter, you kind of, 
I don't want to shortchange. I gotta say, I don't want to shortchange our middle relief guys either, because you know, as a starter, really your goal is to get into the sixth inning. You know, that's always told myself is just get into the sixth inning. You know, hand the ball off to Jammer, Matt Jammer, and then Jammer's gonna get it to Donko. And you know, it's it's pretty comforting. You know, I mean, he had 20. I think it was 20 saves, something around there. You know that if you're winning in the ninth inning, you know, there's a very, very high chance that you're coming out with that win. So it's it's definitely nice knowing that you really just got to get it to the end of the game and just hand it off to Donko. And you know what he's going to do with it. Do you think you guys have the best pitching staff in the Atlanta, and if so, why? Uh, I mean, you always got to be confident in yourself. So, yeah, I do. I think we probably have the deepest pitching staff. I just think that I think what's going to set us apart is – Last year we la we lacked a little bit of depth. We ca we had the ability, but we just lacked depth when it came to tournament time. And I just think that we are extremely we're just so built for a conference tournament setting right now. With you know having to win seven games, we have like I said five, six, seven guys you know can go out and give you six innings. I just think that we're just really, really built to win that tournament in May, as opposed to last year when we were kind of lacking. Probably we we're probably one starter away from really having success in that tournament. And I feel like this year we have a lot of guys who can help us. I think probably the biggest change from last year is you know, the midfield kind of mixed around, kind of has the chemistry and has the, uh, how you guys have come together so far. Um, yeah, it has been a big shift. We lost, like, like you said, we lost a lot of guys. But um, there have been guys that have been there before. And the staple of our infield, Darian Carpenter, is, has provided great leadership for all of us. And um, you know, just with the way the coaching staff pushes us along, and forces the issue. I felt like um, as a unit, we've really developed into, a, into something that can be pretty good. But I mean, day in and day out, we continue to work towards our goal of being a better and better infield. And um, you know, there's a lot of new faces, but they've they've found their own mold within the infield. Well, yeah, how excited you to finally get back on the field and playing against some other competition? I'm sure you're sick of listening to Coach Stiff just yell at you about everything now. We'll <laughs> find new things to yell at you for. But uh, how excited is to finally get back out on the field? Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I can't wait. I think since since we stepped back here on campus, you know, it, it's one of those things that you're like, it's just about a month away, and usually it comes, it comes pretty fast. I think this year has probably been the fastest with us being out on the field as much as we have. We we have yet to go to an indoor facility and hit, which all of us hitters love because we actually get to see the fly of the baseball, and you know, the the fielders get to work, the outfield actually gets to work. You know, we we've been on the field this whole time, so excited for the return and. Um, you know, can't wait to get on that plane Thursday morning and head off to actually play some baseball and make it real.